the 3D shape ramp activity is a must have in your geometry unit, but let me show you some ways to ramp it up. Get it? Never mind. Now, the least you want out of this lesson is to get them learning the names of the shapes. So every time you hold it up, you have them yell out, cone, right? And do it a few times because maybe there's some students who don't know the name of it, but they hear their peers saying it, and then they can say it the second and third time. You go, over here, over here. What is it? Get them just cone, cone, cone. Well, let's get at least three of them up per round to work at the ramp. You get one to pick the shape, you get one who's gonna be the launcher, and then you're gonna get one who gets to catch the shape. Right, so every round you got three people, I wanna come on up, because they wanna be part of the, the show, right? Now, everyone's sitting at the carpet, they're gonna get to participate with total physical response each time. Because when you put this shape on top of the ramp, they're gonna vote, will it roll? Will it slide? Will it stand? Or will it tip over? You know, one of my favorite things when they start to vote with their hand signals is you get the creative kid in class who goes, wow, you know, doing all these things. You say, well, what does that mean? And then they explain, well, I think it's gonna jump off the ramp, it's gonna explode midair, and then it's gonna fall to the ground. Great, they're engaged. Once the activity gets rolling, <laughs> it just doesn't stop with me. You can take it to the next level with some of that higher order thinking. You say, of course, I know the sphere is gonna roll, but can we get this sphere to stop by lowering? And then you can always say, well, why did it or didn't it stop? Rectangular prism, rectangular prism. Then you walk around the room real quick, touch each one. Smooth, rough, like an itchy beard. Interesting, different materials. I wonder how that's gonna affect the situation. Three, two, one, release. What? Why did the small wooden one slide? and this one made out of foam is stuck. It stopped. One of my favorite things to do on this is have them take off their shoes. Now slide, 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 slide. Whoop, da -da -da. And you introduce the concept of friction. This one's small, but it's heavier. So that concept a lot of students have, the bigger something is, the heavier it is, can start to be chipped away at with this little experiment here. Then you come back and say, show me with your hands how high exactly do we have to raise this ramp to get this rectangular prism to move? How tall do we need to make it? And they all vote, and then you start to <laughs> This thing isn't moving. Look at that. It's like Spider-Man clinging to the wall. <gasps> it's almost straight, whoa! What eventually made it move? Cylinder. Are they the same? Thumbs up or down? And of course, everyone's like, that's the same. Not, that's a, not only a cylinder, it's the same kind of cylinder. It's the same product. Oh, really? What's going to happen here? And they vote. Maybe they say slide or tip. What do you all think? Oh, tip and slide. What about this one? What? I thought they were the same. Why did one tip and one slide? And then they can have a discussion. And then you reveal, hmm. What's the volume on the inside? See how I embed that language? What's the volume? One's full of air and one still has some wipes left in it. Come on, catch it. Still inside. How does that affect the cylinder? And then they give an opinion and they justify their opinion. And one of the good results of that is people get used to hearing different opinions and realizing, hmm, maybe there's lots of variables that contribute to the truth of the situation. Or maybe they were wrong and they have to learn to accept that. Now you can also make it cross-curricular by including some phonics. They can have out their whiteboards, chalkboards. If you don't like the mess, get them some magnetic writers, my favorite. And after they vote, and after they name the shape, you can say, all right, well, what's the first sound? What letter makes that sound? They can try and stretch it out. And of course, cone could look like any of these. These are all proper spellings for young spellers. In case there's students who still need more hands-on engagement, give them this special project. Say, I couldn't find a real life pyramid around the house, because you probably can't. It's really difficult. So you need them to build you one. Are they gonna build with a square base or a triangle base? And if they choose to take on this task, what materials do they need? Are they gonna build it out of molding material? Are you gonna give them a putty? 
How about magnet tiles? Maybe they'd be best off with kinetic sand. Maybe they build with all of those and they evaluate and explain what was the best material to build a pyramid. Maybe cardboard and tape and scissors. I don't know. You need to experiment. Speaking of experiment, I want all you to go back to your desk and get out a piece of scrap paper. While your teacher's setting up the ramp activity, here's what I want you to do. Can you roll a piece of paper into a cylinder? And if you can, can you roll it into a cone? And can you explain the difference in technique to make the cylinder versus the cone when you get back to the carpet? All right, y'all. I'll see you next time. Have fun with the 3D shape ramp activity.